fresh off her successful opening slot for Brad Paisley at the Spark Arena, here is Kaylee Bell to tell us about her new single and her own headlining show coming up at the Tuning Fork. Saw you at the Brad Paisley show. Oh, tell nice. me, tell me what that was like for you. It looks like you're having fun. Yeah, it's um, it's just nice to be able to be back playing again. To be honest, um, I think that was like the Brad show would have been probably like our third gig as a band. Right. Um, right. We've been rehearsing through COVID just for our own mental health. Um, yep. But we just hadn't really been, you know, able to play. So it's been so nice to actually have things like, you know, that were meant to happen, happen. And yep, yep, yep. For the boys as well, um, for the band to, you know, experience country audiences, um, which has been really exciting. We played CMC Rocks the week before, which was huge as well. And um, yeah, the Brad thing, it was just such a special night, I think, for country music in New Zealand to see, yep. you know, what what's happening in America like with American stuff and the contemporary kind of country and um you know when I write songs I always write them with the intention to play them in an arena and for that to actually finally be happening is um amazing yeah Yeah. and what was amazing is I've never seen this before I mean the place was packed for you for the opening act you know the hours before old Brad's going to be on that's how did that happen (laughs) (laughs) You tell me. <laughs> I mean, and there were people with Kaylee t-shirts sitting all around me. It was very cool. Um, yeah, like that, honestly, walking out and actually seeing a lot of people there was really, really nice. And I do think it's been like um, a combination of things. But, you know, I've been working really hard for the last five or six years and yep. trying to build things up here in New Zealand and um, introduce people to my music and introduce people to country music. Yep. Um, and that's just what my whole thing is. I want to just keep doing that and keep um, keep getting out there and playing live. So, um, yeah, I, I do. I think that having people there the other night was just basically a series of, you know, releasing songs that connect over the last five or six years. Yeah, yeah, cool. I was just in Nashville a few weeks ago. It was very exciting. Oh, yeah, Went to the Americana Fest there, but it was my first time in Nashville. Man, there was just like music everywhere all the time. The town is crazy, right? Yep, yep, uh, yep. So, yeah, it, so, so. Is it a, do you find it a, a bit of a struggle to get country music sold and, uh, uh, you know, raise the, the profile here in New Zealand? I mean, for me, it's been missing in our, like, culture and on radio and in media for the last 20 years. You know, I grew up singing it since I was four years old and um, I never heard it on radio here as a kid and none right. of my friends liked it because they never heard it. So for me, it was something that I kind of just did with my family in the weekends and never really talked about. So... Um, I definitely know that it's been missing here because I've experienced that firsthand and that's been a big goal of mine for the last 10 years is to try and start and make some changes here. And I think hopefully in the next, you know, realistically, probably in the next five years, I think hopefully we're going to start to see some of those um, changes pay off and, you know, turn on the radio and hear some country music, um, see some more internationals, not just coming to Australia, but, you know, being like, well, why not do New Zealand as well? And then have that here. And I, and I do think streaming's had a lot to do with that as well. I think people accessing their own types of music and um, country music, obviously, through the streaming platforms, um, I think has really changed the game as well. Yeah, well, and the thing I realized at going to the show um, that you opened was country music is different than it used to be. It's There's much more rock involved. There were gu- guitars all over the place, solos everywhere. I mean, what? <laughs> so th- that's, I think, for me, it's a plus. I mean, there's nothing wrong with traditional country music. You know, I'll listen to Tammy Wynette any day of the week, but still, um, tell me how that is, ha- from your point of view, how that's happening. Well, for me, I think I've kind of seen that firsthand for the last 10 years of going to Nashville, going to CMA Fest and watching... You know, Keith, Keith Urban's show is a rock show, like yep. 100%. Florida Georgia Line was the same. Yep. It's like they just, they make songs for arenas and they make a live show for an arena. So I think you need that kind of rock element um, to fill that. And I think there's a lot of similarities between country and rock um, that people kind of aren't aware of. Um, you know, I think we kind of get chucked in this country pop thing that people think is kind of, you know, candy kind of sound, but it's, I think it's actually deeply rooted in a lot of rock country yep. is and yep. um, you know what Shania Twain was doing um, <laughs> and that's kind of what I was inspired to do and um, like I said I've seen it in America for the last 10 years so for Kiwis to finally see it happening here 
I think is hopefully going to be like, okay, I get it now. Yep. And there was a pretty good guitar solo during Small Town Friday nights when you were playing. <laughs> Tell me about the, so that's your latest single. Tell me, give me a little background on that tune. Some things around here, they don't ever change. Like waking up and working hard and knowing when to chase down those cool times. So that's the first song I wrote um, in Nashville this year. I hadn't been for a couple of years with COVID. And uh -huh. um, I wrote that song with my friends, um, Phil Barton and Lindsay Rhymes that I wrote my song Keith with. Right. Um, they're like my guys. They're Australian. They're just really cool. And I had the song title and I was like, this is what we're writing today. And um, Lindsay's awesome. Lindsay produced the track and he's great because he, like, I really love the production side of things. And even things like the guitar solo, I can't play it, but I can sing what I want to hear. And so Lindsay always gets me into those sessions. Um, we had a guy called Soul play the guitars and the banjos. He's um, he's like the most sort of sought after session musician in Nashville. He's just played all over Kelsey Ballerini stuff. He's he's just a real cool dude. And I got to be in the studio with him that day, and we were just like chucking around ideas. And if I heard something, I'd sing it to him. And um, yeah, he's crazy. So. Um, my guitarist Aaron had his work cut out for him to try and replicate the, the, the uh, solo on the record. He did um, well. <laughs> but um, yeah, that song for me, just I just wanted to write like something 90s kind of sounding, Keith kind of sounding, yep. um, feel good. And yep. um, yeah, I think we captured that. And do you have other tunes coming down the pike soon? I do. I've been writing a bunch this year, which has been awesome. And um, been very inspired by yeah, like the Shania Twain, the '90s thing. Um, right. So I've got a lot of yeah, got a lot of tunes just sitting there um, that I'll be releasing over the next few months, which is exciting. Yeah, yeah. So, so now you've got this show coming up at the Tuning Fork. Was that planned before the Brad Paisley thing, or as a result of? Yeah, everything's kind of been happening really like nicely and in the moment. Um, we were just like, let's do a show. Like I haven't actually done my own show in New Zealand before. So like we'll start here and we'll hopefully work down New Zealand. Um, love to get down south, obviously. That's massive priority for me, having grown up yep. down there. So yep. yeah, we were starting in Auckland. Um, first ever show, got Cassie Henderson on the bill, who I'm a massive fan of. And she was a large part of, you know, when I when I wanted to do the show, I was like, I really want Cassie on the show because I think she's doing a great thing for country pop in New Zealand as well. So, right. um, yeah, so first show on November 23rd and then um, we've got a few more festivals. We're headlining Christmas in the Park down in Christchurch and then we're looking at getting some dates down there next year down south as well. Uh huh. So w w you you are from the South Island. I mean, Gore is kind of like the country music uh, center of New Zealand, if there is one. What got you involved in, in steering in the country direction rather than anything else? Yeah, um, I started when I was four, so I don't. <laughs> Good on you. Actually, <laughs> um, no, my brother and sister played and sang in the talent. The talent quest circuit in New Zealand is really big. Um, right. And like gold guitars and Gore is like the pinnacle one. So. We did that my whole life. Like I said, I started that when we were four and just for years and years, we'd travel around New Zealand playing Talent Quest and country was just it. And I connected really young to the American stuff. I love like the Trisha Yearwood, the Faith, the Shania, the just those early, like late eighties, early nineties females in country, um, which was a really good time. And um, yeah, one gold guitars down in Gore when I was 18, which is the youngest you can win the, the big one. And then right. I just, from there, I kind of moved to Australia and kind of just keep kicking kicking on you know yeah I mean Silver Linings was like it was a COVID record for me uh, my producer from LA was living with us for a year and a half um, through through the pandemic so we just naturally we have a studio here at home so we just naturally started making music together um, and he's a massive Mutt Lang Shania fan and we were just like right. he's done country and I was like well let's just bring in your kind of pop rock side and I'll write the the country side and so that was very much like a saving grace, that record. Um, and Silver Linings was a song that I wrote like a week before I put the record out. I was just like, I need a song that kind of sums up where I am in my life. And I'm always grateful for things. I'm always looking for the positive and things, which I think was really important in the last few years. Um, and yeah, to me, that, that album just represents like just the light that music has brought me in the last couple of years through like a really hard time in the industry, you know?
Mm. All righty. Sounds like it's all happening. Does it feel different now, like pre and post COVID for you or pandemic or whatever you want to call it? Yeah, I think um, 2020 was going to be a big year for a lot of people. And I really do feel like everyone had a lot of things lined up. I know we yeah. did. And um, just to have that taken away, I feel like now we're back in that space of what 2020 possibly would have been. So I do, I feel like just grateful for everything that's happening at the moment. Um, and things are starting to kind of fall into place in a really nice way. Um, and, you know, I, I understand how, how hard it is for things to fall into place, having, you know, hustled for the last 10, 12 years. So um, it's, it feels good. It feels like things are moving in the right direction. And um, yeah, like I said, we're just so excited to be out playing with and connecting with people and got a bunch of new music that, just going to keep on keeping on. All righty. Well, I'll look forward to seeing your show at the Tuning Fork. Hopefully Thank it'll you. be full. I'm sure it will be, after, especially after that Brad Paisley thing. I mean, uh-huh. it was just, it was like three headliners in a row. It was oh, fantastic. That was so awesome. that was awesome. Anyway, thank you for spending time talking Bye. to me. All right. See you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.